the big game breakdown. Let's talk Fox National TV, a Friday night. Iowa traveling out to the West Coast to take on UCLA and look at the way to talk live on screen right now. A lot of books down to minus five on the Hawkeyes. They opened six and a half uh, at many places. Total sitting 44 slash 44 and a half range. So we talk about Iowa. Iowa's been really good <laughs> under Ferenc in November. They're 19 and two uh, dating back to 2019 this month. They're coming off a game in which they ran for 329 yards against Wisconsin. That's the most that they've run for in any game since 2019. They have four different players who are run for more than 50 or more yards. They scored 79 points in the last two games, the Iowa Hawkeyes have, with uh, junior quarterback Brendan Sullivan behind center. All of a sudden, this is an offense that's working. Caleb Johnson has been the best running back in college football this side of Aston Junty. He's averaged 7.8 yards per carry, and he's faced a bevy of quality defenses already. Of course, when we talk about UCLA's run defense, it stands out to me. But I'll talk about that in a minute. And, of course, Iowa, when it comes to in, you know making plays defensively. Since 2009, they have 240 interceptions. That's the second most in the country. 35 pick sixes during that span. So, certainly, Iowa team that's very capable of scoring on all three units, offense, defense, and special teams, not a team I'm looking to step in front of. All that being said, this Bruins team, very quietly, way underneath the radar, they're number 14 in the country. They've allowed only 3.3 yards per carry. That's between Ohio State and Georgia, just to put that number in perspective, all right, where they are against the run. They're 5-1 and one against the spread their last six games, all as an underdog. They had an outright upset win at Rutgers before the bye and at Nebraska after the bye. That's the first two games of the year. They scored more than 17 points. All of a sudden, this offense is starting to click. That being said, <laughs> Rutgers is riddled with injuries. Nebraska is a fragile team and in the midst of a losing streak in a way that Iowa isn't. And, of course, Nebraska was coming off that super intense game against Ohio State. Iowa's coming off a blowout. UCLA offensively remains limited. I know they've been better the last couple of games. I'm not convinced they're going to move the ball against uh, this Iowa defense. I don't trust Ethan Gabers in a game where he's facing quality stop unit. And yet, at the same time, when we look at UCLA against the run, I'm not in a rush to lay it here. There's a reason the sharp money's coming for Iowa in this game. So where do we settle on? We settle on the under in a game between an underrated UCLA defense that's playing very well right now and a dominant Iowa defense that's capable of shutting everybody down. So do I expect touchdowns in bunches? No, I do not. But for the Hawkeyes and the Bruins to stay under the number. 44 and a half is a really number. If you shop around, you can find 45s right now. No urgency to get on board with this under if you're interested in making the same bet that I'm interested in making. There you have it. We appreciate the likes, the comments. Tell us what you think below.